think I am. I'd love to hear your questions. It says it's testing my broadcast. My name is Todd Standing. I'm being silly and I shouldn't do that. So I'm live. According to my browser, I am live and my name is Todd Standing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. I am the man who takes people out in the wilderness and has them either live interact with or eyewitness a Sasquatch. Very, very excited this year. Howdy, M.W. Sylvanic and SRG. And all the mediators and all the people. There's my girl Amanda all the way from the United Kingdom. I'm hoping for some incredibly controversial and painful questions today because that's what I usually get that's what I actually go for and hey Jake 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 and Jacob here again how are you Jake fair that's funny because I, I've named two of my Sasquatch Jake and Jacob and I, I thought that was pretty strange that brothers Jake and Jacob but and there's my girl happiest wife ever you want to hear it right now Right now, if you listen real carefully in Texas, you're going to hear somebody scream, Hi, Lacey. Lacey's coming on expedition with me. Right now, she just went, Ah! So, happiest wife ever has been uh, a tremendous supporter of mine. And uh, after a few days of hard negotiations, no, um, happiest wife ever is just like a snow white, wonderful, gentle Texas lady who is uh, immensely interested in Sasquatch. Hello, Kyla. And I, I'm, I am well. The, the cold that I have, the, the kiss my butt cold, it's not going to stop me. From, I didn't stop anything. I didn't stop training. I didn't stop working. <clears throat> it's cold. Life goes on. Cough a little bit. Just, you know, whatever. But uh, we're here to talk about Sasquatch. I hear a lot about David Attenborough. And I remember that. But what did he really have to do with Sasquatch? Is there some kind of... I know he did a little documentary and he had a few things to say, but <coughs> for value for me, it's, I really need to see that it's, it's boots on the ground, even, you know, admiration and respect to the researchers that do lab work and they'll analyze the lab stuff that we give them, but they're not like boots on the ground. Do you understand how special that is? I mean, it's like watching uh, army training or watching Rambo first blood you know what I mean it's like uh, you want to see the implementation and you want to see the practice it's it's boots on the ground is so imperatively important it's it's even things you can't theorize because what Sasquatch will do what what animals will do in the wilderness and, and the weather and the all the things you have to compensate for for God's sake I feel I feel like every time I go out it's it's just I, there's so much new to learn, so many plants, so many animals, so many things to learn about. And, and people will teach you things and, and expeditioners that come out with me teach me so much just by even asking questions. And I was like, man, I don't know the answer to that. Let's go figure it out. That's what a discovery process is about. <gasps> Excuse me. So I just did a video about uh, my one of, you know, one of the best pieces of footage of all time, not even arguably the, uh, the uh, Oregon footage from... Uh, Oh, why am I forgetting his name? Sorry, I didn't sleep much last night. Um, somebody say his name on here. What's uh, Paul Friedman? Right. So, did the Paul Friedman thing, and that's you know that's a really interesting topic. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it because Paul Friedman faked some stuff. He admittedly faked some tracks. He admittedly, I saw a handprint that he clearly uh, faked. Even even, let's say the so I saw a handprint. He's got a totally awesome legit one that's very authentic. I, I'm, I'm powerfully convinced 99% that it's it's very authentic. It just looks exactly like a Sasquatch hand like I've seen it. We should <coughs> I should get a picture of it because <coughs> um, I filmed it when I was at Jeff Meldrum's office. That's where it exists right now is with Jeff Meldrum. Him and his incredible tracks. And he would go, he would drive along with Jeff Meldrum in the truck. This is what Jeff told me. And he'd pull over the side of their Sasquatch tracks and they'd go cast them and they were totally authentic and legit. So Paul Friedman had some pretty spectacular, amazing stuff going on. I got a, people questioning me about, well, Paul Friedman, where did he live? He filmed his footage in Oregon and he was from Washington. Well, he was from Walla Walla, Washington, and where he filmed the Sasquatch footage, the potential Sasquatch footage, is uh, only an hour drive away in Oregon. Remember, the states are touching each other, right? And the Sasquatch don't know about state borders. Trust me. They don't know about any kind of borders. So uh, 
yeah, uh, where's the beard? Oh, God. So the beard and the hair are all short. I promise the expeditioners I'll grow the beard back. So I have people, if you don't have a beard, I'm not coming on expedition with you. Well, it'll grow back. So I've got uh, five or six weeks for the beard, uh, six weeks uh, to be shaven up and nice and short and hair and proper. And you're all going to find out why. Uh, just my personal life uh, will change dramatically in the next six weeks. So, But we're here to talk about Sasquatch. So uh, let's do that. If you found an injured Sasquatch, what would you do? I don't, I don't think, I think they take care of their own. I mean, I got injured and they, they fixed me up and took care of me, you know, took me out of the, what, what happened just in short was uh, I had an incident where the Sasquatch scared me and I was running from them. I ran into a tree, it stabbed me in the leg, my leg started bleeding and I fell in, in water in a, in a creek that was glacier runoff and would have died. So they moved me up to a spot and stopped the bleeding in my leg. Just the point of that is that, uh, and I really do, th- that's something too that people should know is uh, it, was, it was a cut that would have, the doctor would have stitched it up. He looked at it and went, I would stitch that, but, and then he, I remember he moved my leg because it's right by my knee is where the, the hole is, <clears throat> right by the teardrop muscle just to the, it's on my right leg, so <clears throat> just to the left of the knee, maybe uh, two inches down. I'd shove it up to the camera, but I don't have much of I didn't even have much of a scar after it healed so well. And the, so the doctor, anyways, he moved my leg around. And when my <clears throat> when you flex my leg, my teardrop muscle, it it's bigger than my knee. It boom. I have kind of strangely muscular legs, and uh, my teardrop muscle when I when I collapse my leg like this. So this is open. When I collapse my leg like that, the teardrop muscle bulges out past my knee. So the point is the movement is incredible. Like what this, my skin would literally go. It wasn't bleeding. And that, that salve, that, that, what do I even call it? The, the tonic. It's not that the, the sap mixture of, of organic biological components. Um, it wasn't coming off. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd had a shower once. I didn't scrub it or anything. I just kind of rinsed my legs off. I expected it would come off, but I just, I just left it. And it, it did come off about a week later. And when it came off, at the time, it, and you understand, you understand it came off a week later. And by the time it came off, my leg was like healed and it didn't need to be there anymore. So my point is with all this, I think that their abilities to heal and take care of each other is very exceptional and their devotion to one another is very very fantastic so um but hey let's tell you a story i tell you a story about uh um a a native lady an old native lady they believe that a sasquatch actually lived up with her (coughs) because all these incredible things were happening harvests were happening uh her garden was getting tilled and uh, i don't there were just things that i can't remember right exactly off the top of my head but there was stuff that was being fixed. It was happening at her place that she couldn't have done on her own. She was an old lady. And then one day, one of uh, the daughters came back early and she saw a large limping Sasquatch, like an old looking grayish Sasquatch walk into the bush. <clears throat> and when she asked her mother about it, she was in den- she denied it and didn't want to talk about it, told her not to sneak up anymore. She was very, for that, that the lady was very defensive for the rest of her life. This is an elderly native woman, tremendously defensive about people coming around and protective. And they saw Sasquatch tracks and stuff and then uh, and then she passed away and uh, so anyways th- there was a lot of speculation that she had an actual old male injured Sasquatch that was living on her land with her so I know this is crazy s- s- paranormal stuff but the, pr- the problem that we have though is we need to talk about these things because nobody will take them seriously that that elderly lady nobody would have freaking believed her and she didn't want people around because it's, it's, you know, her and the Sasquatch had a relationship. And, uh, yeah, I, so, you know, but interesting if that, if that's true or not, just, just another very interesting story. And, and we got to, uh, you know, yeah, I don't believe his videos. This is Barry Holmes doesn't believe in, and uh, all the power to you. I mean, he could have faked it. You're talking about the, uh, obviously the Paul Freeman video. Yeah. And it, it could have been faked, but again, let's look at the bigger picture. Why would you fake it? The man must have known. I, Again, I talked about this in my video, but the man must have known Sasquatch are real. Those tracks are legit, as so legit, ridiculously legit. And then, I don't know if this is true or not, but it seems that he was filming those 9-inch Sasquatch tracks. I'm telling you guys, I'm a tracker. Those are legit. 99% convinced that those are, just by looking at them, normally I wouldn't deduce with such 
certainty that a, a trackway is absolutely real but man those tracks in the beginning of his video but then there's like a cut and then he he shot his sasquatch video my question would be did he stop recording and then start recording a few minutes later because now that you gotta understand that's really important because if those are legitimate real tracks for a sasquatch and i believe like those were organic those were not casts the the, the foot is moving and bending the way of a cast or even a piece of rubber Maybe a piece of rubber could do that, but did they, did they have that technology back in 94 to have a rubber cast, I suppose? I don't know. There's, you know, ugh, it's so, it's just, it's just interesting. Let's say it was fake, though. Why did he do it? He faked it because he knew they were real and he just wanted to show the world they were real. So, you know, I don't know. We just, we can, we can debate it forever. And again, with me, it's just the, the shine from the fur, the way it, the, the Sasquatch, the potential Sasquatch looked right at the camera for a moment and even the way it moved very stop and go I don't know it just it, it, it's, it reads to me to, to, to lean towards authenticity even though I know that uh, Paul Freeman did fake stuff and, and what, you know what it take to fake something like that can you imagine that would man that, if that was a sass that was no gorilla costume you know so for somebody to fake that Wow, I just you gotta you gotta think like man, that's really tried. Like you gotta understand that there have been like uh, real hoaxes that have been put on. Like uh, there was some magicians. Uh, Penn and Teller did a hoax, and I don't think their Penn and Teller spent fifty thousand dollars plus 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 to do that hoax, and I don't think it was as good as the Freeman footage. You know, so how did Freeman do it? Did he get lucky? Did he find some makeup guy and then? A thing about Freeman, though, that, that he and I wouldn't see eye to eye on is he was going to kill one. And then, so there's a question. If he was all about killing one, I mean, he wanted to kill one. He said he was going to shoot one. That's bad juju. That's really, really bad. Then why didn't he shoot that Sasquatch? Why didn't he have his gun with him? Why was he filming at that moment? Did he change his mind? He can't. The problem is people try to do this with me. They'll 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 try to sum up my life in, in, in one year. It doesn't work that way. I was different. I was... I, I considered shooting one a long time ago, and I considered tranquilizing one. That's a, that's a fool's game at best. And you got to understand, man. You talk to, talk to a tranq gun expert before you think about tranquilizing a Sasquatch. You don't know how big it is. You don't know its metabolism. You don't know where it's going to run to when you screw up the dart. And when I'm doing it in the Rocky Mountains, a Sasquatch gets tranked and they go up. They go climbing, and then they pass out, and they fall down and die. Now you're in real trouble. You're in trouble no matter what. You just shot at a Sasquatch. My God, you're going to die. So it's it's crazy. Uh, so uh, somebody's asking here, wasn't your documentary available on Netflix? It was. The two-year contract is up. It was trim- <laughs> I have people saying it got canceled from Netflix. Uh, no, it was one of the top documentaries of all time on Netflix. I just love that. I feel like Jerry Steinfeld when he was on, on Larry King going, so when your show was canceled, Jerry, and Jerry's like, I was number one. Like we did a final season. So, got to understand, people, Netflix and Discovering Bigfoot killed it. So, a two-year contract is a two-year contract, though. And now it's on Amazon Prime. I mean, we're, we got some distribution. We got some legs with that. And I'm, I'm super proud that the distributor did all that good stuff. So, um, and now it's on YouTube and, you know, it's in Walmarts and, and DVD sales and all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, Cactus Tech says, hey, Todd, going to Texas in a few days now instead of April. We got, you got hair. Huh. Well, send me some. P.O. Box 2094, Golden British Columbia. Rewind, play again. Or send us an email at uh, bigfootencounter at gmail.com. I bet you Amanda's going to drop that up in a few minutes. And uh, I'd love to, I only need uh, one hair. Just give me one. I mean, if you've got multiple hairs, if you only have one hair, keep it. But I have a light microscope that I purchased, a very expensive light microscope. And thanks to Jeff Meldrum, I can, I can, I believe I can identify the pheno, the phenotype to look for in, uh, or just the, the morphology, I guess it'd be a more specific thing to look for, the traits of the hair. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to have a look at it. And if it's legit, I'll pay for, I'll pay for the DNA test that I had done, which if you want a DNA test done, I recommend Paleo DNA. It's a Canadian uh, university and they do but they only do it's not a full genome you gotta understand it's not a full genome but what's cool is when they come back with the same uh, analysis as me and what you do is you ask for them to pair it to human beings and chimpanzee because it comes back as human but it comes back as non-human when compared to the chimpanzee and that's where the rue is is you're dealing with hominids that have literally in the DNA are 
19 times human female DNA. They're, by definition, since that is true, and we have to say it's true, it's true, they've proven it. It's been three other labs have confirmed the findings. The DNA has 19 human female, female mitochondria. If you can breed with, if, some, if, a, if a gorilla could breed with a human being and produce viable offspring, which they cannot, they would not be a different species. That's the definition of species, is when you can viably produce offspring with another individual. So that's the definition of species. And so I guess let's just say it. We're the same species, aren't we? We're not a different species. They're breeding and producing viable offspring. Same species. So maybe I should start talking about that, right? Start pushing that button a little more because I've had some some big name geneticists and DNA people telling me they've looked at that, the, the specimens that were gathered and uh, they all show the same thing. Isn't that, it's just so profound, isn't it? It's so freaking profound. It's like, wh why are we even here having this conversation? We should be like, where was the recognition? Where's the, where's the big show? Where, <laughs> you know what I mean? What's going on? We proved they real, didn't we? Over and over and over. Don't take my word for it. Come up with me and show you a Sasquatch. Like, I don't know. It's, it's crazy to think that we're in this kind of a situation where happiest wife ever, Lacey's kind of come out. and she, I'll tell you, the odds of her expedition is very special because uh, I've paired her up with another. She's like a ringer. And I've paired her up with another ringer. It's a couple of Snow Whites. And uh, I have really high hopes for that expedition because the boy Sasquatch that come around, they sure like girls. And two really nice, uh, you know, even, I'll say it, fertile females that are, you know, beautiful girls and, you know, the boys like that stuff. So let's get to some questions here. Uh, Paul's Creek. So Logan, Bella Cute. So Todd, do you think Sasquatch bury their dead? I think it would make sense because it explains why they've never found bodies. Yeah, I think they put them in caves. I just, I go with that based on the Gigantopithecus findings, right? So, and also I heard some stuff in Oregon. Uh, a native elder told uh, two colleagues of mine, a police officer and a wildlife officer, that he saw a Sasquatch skull and he explained the, the, the way the skull looked and he found it in a cave. And then they tried to go back there for a few years and they couldn't because the Sasquatch there wouldn't let them in the whole area. It was a system of caves and they never got to go search it because they would literally get their asses handed to them. And we all agreed, don't go back there anymore. Don't do it. Stop it. And now they're trying to study that troop, trying to get over that. Uh, when you go to, uh, when you're looking for a grave area and it's holy ground, that's a bad way to start a relationship. Can you imagine you, you the, the Vikings land here in North America and the first thing they do is go on holy ground and start desecrating bodies? The natives are going to be pretty upset about that, to say the least. So um, that's the way their relationship kind of started. And uh, oh yeah, and uh, I do. I did a Dixie Cryptid uh, uh, interview that I was just happy about. I, I love the Southern United States so much. I just uh, it's, a, it's got a real special place in my heart. Just some Southern Americans that have worked with me and come on expeditions and uh, just I just I love it there. I love the Southern United States, and I'm very proud to admit it. So, but you know, uh, I'm a North man. You know, I'm up here, and uh, today I'm broadcasting from northern Alberta, which is where the Wolverine comes from. I'm a bit of a superhero fan, and yeah, this is Wolverine territory for the mighty Wolverine from X-Men. <coughs> so, <coughs> anyway, uh, Gene G, get some quality nano silver and neutralizer. It will knock that... <laughs> Thanks, Gene. You know, I, th I thought you were going to get into something that I actually would like to talk about, that I, that I intend to do. I just haven't had good success getting the Sasquatch to go to an area because what I want to do, I've never tried this before. Well, I, I tried to try it, but there's a powder you can buy that you throw a white powder and you throw it on the ground. It looks, you can't really see it. Um, and it shows up on, on a, a light spectrum. What's that? I'm forgetting all my terminologies here. Anyways, uh, it, there's a powder. You could do that. You throw it on the ground. You, you take a infrared light and all, it all shows up. So if a Sasquatch came in, I would see his tracks and I would see which way he goes. And for quite a while, probably. And uh, so I really wanted to do that. But uh, the company I purchased it through, I spent like a lot. I spent like $500 buying a big pail of it. And they never gave it to me. And I just gave up after that. And I was going to do it next, last year. But I was not having, I had no success in radium giving them apples. They, they didn't take a single 
gift from me last year in radium, which is very upsetting. But we're still having really good success. So you, in Nordeg, I was having them take apples, you know, a good chunk of the time. I'd say one in three times they would take apples when I put them out, which is very, very significant, obviously. And I had zero success with that. And, uh, you know, so all the structures that were there in radium have all fallen down. So I don't have any structures to put it on. Well, I, there's one structure that's really old. I put apples there. They didn't take them. So, you know, I don't know. We're working on it. But wouldn't that be cool? Can you imagine how cool that would be? The apples get taken and you see that. So I could go in there with infrared light. I just, the problem with that, I would do that once. Like when the apples start getting taken. And then I would put that, that powder down. And uh, I try to do it covertly because they'll likely be watching me. And, you know see what happens that would just be very exciting to me to see those kind of you'd probably get some pretty amazing looking markings from that that powder that shows up so well and uh, i'd be very interested even p possibly dermal and stuff but it sucks because uh it's hard to get i don't know it's hard to, like i had i had sasquatch fingerprints i think this year and i sent it out to a bunch of people and some fingerprint guys and everybody talks they, go, bah, 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 they talk and then you send it to them and they disappear and you don't hear it anymore and uh, that's the way most people are. It's kind of frustrating. So, Steve Skotakarkan. I definitely pronounced that wrong. Whoa. My thing jumped. Where's Steve here? Come on. We can do it. Okay, that question is gone. It just jumped, and I have no idea where it is. Um, Eric says, uh, got it in warmer weather. It's beautiful. The weather is still cool here. Um, but I, I like cold weather. It'd be nice to get an early. I was just talking to Lacey today. And it'd be nice to get a bit of an earlier year. That way, it, for her expeditions, uh, the strawberries will be ripe. But we need them. Normally, the strawberries ripen mid-August, and she's coming in August. So you definitely don't want to have our strawberries. We have, our strawberries are just little itty bitty things, but they they're powerful punches. Like you put one in your mouth, it just explodes with flavor. So uh, anyway, she wants some strawberries, and so we need an early spring for that for her to get those. Uh, your you're the best out there. Love you. Well, thanks, Ed. And, um, yeah, I almost, I know you're being nice and I really appreciate that, but please don't call me the best. You know, I, I do a good job and you're, you're happy with my research, but if there's ever a Bigfoot competition for the best Bigfooter in the world, I will not show up for that because, uh, we're all doing, I do the best I can. And I, that even is kind of a cliche, but I put a hundred percent into what I do and, and I, I sleep good at night knowing that. It's interesting gigano fossils were found in a cave. That's way beyond interesting, Eric. That is really, really important. Eric Holm from CA. Okay. You're not you're not with Wim Hof. Hof is different than Holm. Okay. Uh I mentioning Wim Hof. Uh his son, I, I believe his son is that's no, not Eric. It's a big big awesome uh Norwegian name. I was gonna last year I was trying to get the Iceman to come out and do Iceman meets Bigfoot. And I still want to do that this year. I'd be very excited to do that. I, 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 I've been taking his training and doing his work because uh, it helps. You know, it helps. With every, we, sometimes we have to cross freezing cold creeks. And, uh, and it's, it, the water's flowing hard and it, it can damp. It kills you. It's hard. And I can, I can take somebody across and go back and forth and back and forth because of my Iceman training. Uh, the expeditioners only go across at once. And I take them one at a time because if they slipped... They would die. If, you, if you're if you on an expedition with me and you go across that creek or one of those creeks and you slip, you will very likely die. That water will smash you. You'll hit the rapids. That's the dangers involved. I try to tell people that on expeditions. However, if Todd Standing is downstream from you and you slip, you're not going anywhere. I'm picking your ass up and I'm taking you over there. That's why, that's why I am six foot three and 230 pounds Captain America because the day may come and the day has come where people will slip or fall and you are coming home with me and you are coming home safely. So uh, Andy says, Trevor, I hope he answers your question. Okay, so I'll go back to Trevor. Haven't seen, haven't seen you release anything new for a long time. Sounds like there's a lot in the archives to share. Uh, what well, I got new footage this year, so and it's going to be in a documentary. So first I have to finish California Bigfoot and then I will finish Discovering Bigfoot Part 2. And then I'll work on discovering Bigfoot Part Three this year, so it's it's just it's good stuff. And to be honest, I haven't even really gone through it all. So 
I've had quick looks at it here and there. I, I'm a little, I'm a little traumatized by the footage because it was hard, and what happened, uh, it traumatized me. It was scary. I was, I was, I was face to face with a Sasquatch with a camera, you know, and it was, it was just, it was just getting dark. It was halfway to dark, and uh, I just think about it now, and I get goosebumps. It was freaking terrifying. So he just held his ground and didn't move. The, the radium Sasquatch, what's so scary about them and amazing and awesome is if they come around, they hold their bloody ground. They don't run away. So the pretend, when you go into the bush, oh, you just heard a Sasquatch. Okay, you go into the bush and they won't move. They'll move towards you. That's their home. These are the wild bunch and they're not afraid. So it's great when you want to go see them, but it's freaking terrifying moving towards... You know, they're beastly, just beastly. Like, imagine the biggest, imagine Andre the Giant, the agile and twice, you know, twice the size. What was Andre the Giant? 500 pounds? Not. So 400 pounds? Yeah. And these these guys are 900, 800 pounds, some of them, 700. And then the primate power? Like, guys, the, the romance of it all and the drama, when you're really faced with a Sasquatch, and even even scarier when you when you have the knowledge to know <clears throat> they're not alone. You might see that one, and even this year the one that I filmed probably only five five hundred pounds I think. So uh, I think about a approximately fourteen year old. Scary, and but it wasn't so much. I, I was scared. I mean, he'd tear me apart. I was I was afraid, but I knew what was around me. The big guys were around me. And that that's, scares me too because you saw my video where they hit me with a log, so that didn't happen this year, thankfully. But uh, yeah, anyways, I'm glad to have answered your question. Um, uh, Nephilim, no, I, I don't do biblical stuff. I'm not uh, I'm not doing religion. It's contra. This subject is controversial enough. We are not getting involved in religious and angels and stuff. Um, Daniel, <coughs> me and my brother <coughs> have been learning a lot about Bigfoot, our area where. Where we live is crazy, and tree breaks and stacking stricks between trees, a lot more. Three hundred and seven game land in Jeremiah, Pennsylvania, on route. Well, we'd love to hear what you have to say, Daniel. So, Bigfoot Encounter at Gmail dot com. Amanda will get all involved in that, and she'll pass it on to me. So, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear. I, I hear. You know, you know what, Daniel? Though I, we get so don't we get a lot of crap, Amanda? We get crap. We get people that are just full of crap. I don't buy it. Uh, there was a, a, a new guy that I was trying to deal with a couple months ago where he's like, there's Bigfoot buried in graves on this land. And it's, you know, and I'm like, well, go dig them up. I won't go on there. It's private land. Well, it's your neighbor. Go ask him. Well, he won't let me over there. Well, I'll sneak out there at night and go dig it up. Grow some balls. Well, I'm not. What kind of crazy person do you think I am? Do you know what I've done for this discovery? So you fly out here and do it. Kiss my ass. Not, I don't even know that they're out there. If you know, if you know there's Sasquatch bodies out there, go dig up a leg, you dumbass. Go get you, go do something. You know, go make it happen. Find somebody else around there that has some balls. I'm not flying out to your state, and then you know, and you won't get a photograph or nothing from me. So, um, my point is, you know, if, if you got stuff, I I, I want to believe you. Show us your breaks. I show me how big the break is. I'll I'll have a look at it. I. I have, a, I have an expeditioner coming up from uh, kind of a, a, a local guy. He's from the same province as me. Our province is huge. He's the other end of the province. But um, I'm talking to him as, you know, he's got elk and deer. He's got wonderful Sasquatch habitat. And then he says, yeah, we have tree breaks. And I go, can I see pictures? And he shows me them. I'm like, dude, you Sasquatch, how far is that? He goes, oh, it's about 50 yards from my house. And there's like four of them. And from different years. So they're coming there. Those are Sasquatch tree breaks. He goes, well, I don't really think so. I go, I don't think so either. I know so. Unless you've been faking them. And, and, and you know, th that person only knows the truth. I mean, if he went out there and faked them. I, but I don't even know how you'd fake them. I don't think you can fake tree breaks. When the, when the trees are, you know, three, four inches thick, you can't break it clean like that. I don't know. You, well, you could. You'd have to have a machine. But why the hell would you do that? They're all pointing the same direction. You know, and then he, he goes back. He's like, holy crap, Sasquatch are coming right up. Yeah, man. So I'm super excited to have him on expedition. And uh, yeah, so, but, but anyways, you know, uh, Daniel Calab Calabrese, if you're having that success, I would love to help you out with that. It's in uh, PA, you say. So game land out there. That's, you know, congratulations. 
and uh, you know, tell us more about it. And I'd I would like to expand at one point. I just just got so much personal crap going on, and uh, once it's over, I want to exp I'd like to have a discovering Bigfoot Research Center in, in most of the states in the United States, and you know, a few provinces in Canada, and. Uh, I just, I'm very ambitious about this. I I would I would love to do that stuff. And then and then even like Gaia and different people are calling me. Could you could you do a Sasquatch channel? I'm like yeah, but I would need help from a lot of people, and uh, you know so I want to build those relationships, and uh, you know that's what I have to say about that. Uh, Guadalupe Hendrickson asks, could Sasquatch possibly live under in underground caves? Yeah, but I don't think why why would they? Um, it's not food down there, you know, uh, it would be, I mean, maybe in the winter time, but, uh, but underground's cold, right? So, and you don't want to be too cold. It's, well, it's cold everywhere, but if you're just saying in the winter time, then maybe to be secluded, but, uh, why would, why would you be living in an underground cave when you love nature, you love outdoors, caves get stinky, uh, mold mildew build up they're dark dank i just can't see a sasquatch getting any enjoy that's not where they'd want to live and uh they're just, they're just i just see them they're out there they're doing things you know sleeping in out under the stars would be wonderful if it's raining sure get to a cave but you know you could shelter yourself under a fat tree too but uh i think i think they would be just extreme circumstances only would would be the use of caves and uh you know underground caves entirely dependent upon them being there are underground caves somewhere and I don't I've I never see underground caves never have I found underground caves I've seen caves of all kinds but nothing that went underground yet so uh, yeah thanks for listening tonight Carol Beck uh, drink conga coffee everybody's worried about my cold don't worry guys I'll get over this cold real quick I appreciate your concern um, we're just gonna Dixie Crippet and saw your live show. Yeah, Dixie Crippet will be, and it was that was a fun show. I enjoyed it. Uh, have you watched Sasquatch Ontario? No, no, I'm sorry, I have not. So I got a thing about Ontario because I know a guy from Ontario hoaxed my friend and mentor John Bendagel. So I've kind of kept away from the uh, Bigfoot organizations in Ontario because one of them is very bad. He deceived my friend and played a. It really bothered me because John got excited about some tracks and they were clearly fake. And, uh, you know, that just, if you met John Bernard and saw what a wonderful man he is, for somebody to go lie and cheat and deceive him like that. I mean, John paid for his flight out there and uh, and he got really excited because he thought lots of stuff was happening. And then I, I, I solidly proved to him that those were definitively fraudulent Sasquatch tracks. And uh, they went through a lot of trouble to fake him and hoax him. And that really, I'm not going to lie, that just really upset me. That made me angry because he's such a wonderful man. And to do that to somebody who's, he's, he's just out for the betterment of the discovery. He's just such a good, wonderful man. And you douchebags deceived him and lied to him and cheated him and took advantage of him. And that pisses me off much. So there'll be a day where I'd like to meet these jerks and tell them what I think of them because that just pisses me right off, you scumbag, low-life pieces of garbage. So I was very upset about it. And to see to see even John, the disappointment, because he, you know, he was very excited to show me something, and I was like, John, that's totally fake. And, you know, so it, just, it really it really pissed me off. And, I, you know, it hurt, it hurt his feelings. Like, he's just a wonderful, gentle man, and he was like, he got he was upset about it, and it, it hurt his feelings. And you got to be a complete piece of garbage to do that a piece of garbage scumbag and it makes me angry so let's go on to the next subject because i don't want to be angry um do you do i think do i think all bog all bigfoot are aggressive no absolutely not do you think it's based off a location it's based off individuals uh, i hear some say they were just watched and then they ran hmm yet some are attacked or chased yeah well B bigfoot are you know dogs are different you can see i have a beautiful roddy she's adorable if you ever broke into my house she'd probably lick you to death so you know and then there are roddies that'll kill and attack people it's we really got to use common sense with this guys and when you're talking about a highly intelligent species there are different personalities different different they're gonna have they're gonna have the ted bundy of sasquatch some crazy sasquatch that's killing everything and just some horribly murdering and you know what too they'd be more likely to have a violent 
uh, individual within their within their numbers because they're hunters and killers. That's what they do. They love deer. They love elk. They kill them. They kill those animals. And then they tear them apart and eat them. So, uh, you know, I've never seen any evidence to, to, to show that they killed any animals slowly. Like bears and wolves, oof, man, they, mountain lions will kill things slowly. They, but they have to. They do what they have to do. And, you know, I've seen, I've seen bears kill things and not even want to eat it. Just kill for the sake of killing because they're... That's what they do. They're hunters. So nature is, uh, you know, it's primordial. It's, it's, it's violent. And uh, if you don't understand that, you know, little, little baby cute deers get killed by, and bears and wolves love to kill those sweet little babies. They're super tasty, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be, so all or one, it, that's actually quite a preposterous statement. They're just individuals and I'd say I'd say my numbers are about fifty percent of the time I'll go into a Sasquatch area and they don't like me and they don't want me around, and I leave. So, and I, I I'll make that deduction pretty quickly now. It took me back in maybe a decade ago. I would give them a lot more. I try to win them over, and I wouldn't do that now. Um, if I see certain behaviors, but it's 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 so relative too, right? Because they're big aggressive creatures and and. What, what might be really terrifying and scary and seem aggressive to some people is not. They're just big, giant primates. They scare the hell out of people on my expeditions, and I, I, you see me there smiling, going, well, give me a smile, because that was awesome, right? Because they, they didn't have to do that, and they came around and showed themselves. But it was so terrifying, the smashing and the booming. No, no, he's showing off. And are you impressed? Uh-huh, me too. And he put on a show for us. And he didn't have to do that, and, you know, it's very... A tree got bashed over uh, on one expedition that was really cool. Like we, it was daytime. It was a Sasquatch. He just bashed over a tree, and he was showing, you know, he was showing how big and strong he is. But it was it was awesome experience. We, me and the expeditioners, loved it. And we we're very grateful for it. And you know, so just gotta, I don't know. It's it's. Uh, it's definitely not black and white with things. We gotta just keep using our brain as best we can. So, okay, Sharon Miller, that's fine. You don't want to come to Ontario? Oh no, 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 no! Please don't do that to me. Please don't do that to me. But don't you know of anyone trustworthy here? I just don't know much about Ontario. I could check if we have them. I, I love Ontario. Ontario's beautiful. I there's definitely Sasquatch there. So just there's one person. There's you know that happens to be in Ontario. So, but. Uh, yeah, I hear lots of stuff from Ontario. Oh, I wish I could help you out with that. I just don't have time to do that stuff right now. I just don't have to look around, check it out for yourself. Um, a, a, a good a good rule of thumb would be if if you talk to a Sasquatch organization in Ontario that worked with John Bernagel, that's a big red flag. I only know of him working with one organization that deceived him badly. So, uh, yeah, but there's lots of people, lots of organizations. And Ontario is beautiful, gorgeous gorgeous province uh very very proud to, of you know the fact that i'm <laughs> what am i going to say a canadian that i'm a i'm i'm a member of planet earth and that's on earth that's what i would say i don't like borders guys i don't like people being american canadian united kingdom you know french australian i just i just feel like we're people it's it's interesting to see that there's a southern american culture and i love that but we're all people and uh you know, I'm proud of the Southern American culture. I feel like it's uh, something that's it's very dear to me, and I'm proud to be a human being with Southern Americans and, you know, with Kenyans and with the French people and with the, you know, so uh, anyways, I just, I don't want to separate us because those borders have a tendency to make us think that, you know, some people are maybe better or different than, and I don't like that stuff at all. So I had an encounter with them in Washington State, Kevin. Well, we'd love to hear it, Kevin. Right above your comment is uh, Sefi Soros. That's my Amanda. You can see she's a moderator here. And it's BigfootEncounter at gmail.com. We would love to hear about that. I love Washington State. Washington State I go to. I may have just made plans today to get my butt down to Washington State. Um, we'll see how that pans out. <coughs> so uh, I'd be looking forward to it. I love uh, the Olympic Peninsula. There are Sasquatch there. Saw one. And then substantiated that sighting with tracks. So there are Sasquatch in in that 
Olympic Peninsula. And it's beautiful, gorgeous habitat for them. Very, very rich with the ocean on the coast, uh, all the coastal foods that they have. And then I saw a beautiful fat elk down there. Of course, they have deer. I didn't see any moose. I would assume they have moose, though. They must have moose. Just didn't see one, though. I didn't see any tracks from any. Uh, David Good Godly asked me, do I know of David Pilati? Absolutely, yes. And I know of one of his incidents where a human being was uh, harmed by a Sasquatch that's absolutely authentic. I know, And I say one because I, I knew about that one. I can substantiate that. And then Les Stroud went and worked with him. I believe, I'm quite certain I saw that and heard about that, but uh, I, I guess I could just call Les and talk to him. He's just, right here on my phone, let's give Survivor Man a call. How are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, that'd be interesting to have him come in on a phone conversation. Happiest wife ever. Do you think females get jealous of other females? Huh. Or are they so pure they don't have that flaw? Well, I don't know enough about females to answer that question by a long shot. Females I know the least about, and I'm just learning in the past four years that females are coming around too, that they're, it's not just all males. So I thought it was just boys coming around, but there is the odd female. I'm still very, the evidence still significantly ports to the vast majority being male. But, uh, you know, if you're thinking that, uh, (laughs) that, uh, this happiest wife ever is coming on an expedition with me. And if you're thinking about a female that likes me and being jealous of you being there with me, you have nothing to worry about. So uh, I'm, I'd be firmly convinced that when, when females are of breeding age, they're going to be bred by the dominant male. And if they're related to the dominant male, when they become of breeding age, they're going to leave and go find themselves a male who will dominate them. And uh, there'll be no, it's, it's male dominated societies and one male can have 10 females to breed with, right? So lucky guy, Unfortunately, you'll get males that never get to breed, and that's why you have males breeding, male Sasquatch breeding with human females because it's a male dominated society. And we have, you know, the libido is a very powerful, it's very powerful. Money makes the world go around, and sex is a close second, I would think. People are very motivated by that. So, um, Stephen Kosiak, you had a question already, but it's a big mix. They will live in any environment that will suit them, even if it's their pref- preferred environment, caves included. Caves are too cold for most humans in winter, but they could do... Yeah, they would provide shelter. And a cave would be warm if you had like 10 Sasquatch in it and it was small. Each Sasquatch would generate body heat. <coughs> so, and taking the sting of the wind out of the, the equation is pretty huge. And then... Uh, you could put you could put down uh, twigs and grass on the ground as insulation to sleep on it. These things are very important, guys. I'll tell you, when I go out on an expedition and you put a sleeping bag on the ground, the ground sucks the, t- the heat out of you. It just never seems, just always sucking the heat out of you. And uh, that's why people that go out, they will have little mats or something, and it's a really good idea. I remember sleeping on an air mattress in a tent, and the, the ground was just sucking the heat right out of me. So in cold weather, so uh, hello, Claire, and you can call me Toddy if you like. I don't mind. (coughs) Actually, I don't really like Toddy, but you can call me Toddy if you like. Diane Smith, hi, Todd. Are there Sasquatches in Southern California? Probably too warm for them, right? Well, I've got a colleague that's usually on here that I really like called uh, Southern SoCal Forest Ninjas. He doesn't seem to be on, but uh, he... SoCal and SoCal is Southern California Forest Ninjas, and I find him to be rather credible. Uh, never met him, never been out with him. I've been through Southern California, but they, they have them down in uh, New Mexico. At least that's what uh, was it, David Kreider, Kreider Expeditions. I don't know if his first name is David. <coughs> he's like a superhero, though. <laughs> I really like him. He's got cool equipment and. Uh, He's been on a few TV shows. I think he even did a Nat Geo show. And uh, (coughs) he just seems like kind of like a, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm I'm just drawn in, but he seems kind of like a cool superhero guy. And, you know, so if they're down there and he's, he's, he's had tracks and stuff and I don't know, I just, I just see a lot of authenticity in it. And if he's faking it all, what the hell is he faking it for? He's faking it to prove the Sasquatch are real. 
Not, I don't know. Is that a, is he a bad guy? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. So, um, oh, just keep me safe, LOL. Yes, happiest wife ever. Everybody who comes on expedition with me, I've never even had I've never even had an injury besides maybe blisters from hiking. I've never had a person sprain an ankle. Um, but that's attributed a lot to the expeditioners too, right? They're tough and they're in shape and they're ready. Or if, if they're not fit and they're not kick-ass backcountry t- tough, then we take it easy. We drive around a lot and, you know, we'll go short on short little hikes in uh, comfortable areas. But the more hiking and the tougher you are, the more you can get out there, the far, the far more likely you are to see a Sasquatch. So... There's so many reasons that are so obvious to me. When you're not healthy, like I had a primatologist come around and uh, how do I put this? Her, she just gave off, she, she seemed healthy and somewhat fit, but she ate really toxic. She was addicted to candies and sugar and uh, <clears throat> she had a smell that was very toxic and, and very yucky. And, and I, the Sasquatch stayed away from her so much. Like they just were like, Ma! and I think it was because of that. We just smell toxic and scary because the Sasquatch are going to smell your urine, guys. You go pee out in the bush. I mean, eventually you're going to go pee out there sometime. When we go out, we're out for, on my expeditions, we're out for a good 12 hours. you got to go at one point. There's not going to be a toilet at all times. And you're going to have to pee because we're drinking tons of water. And when you pee, to urine to an animal, like if a dog pees, another dog goes and smells it. And Sasquatch are very... Much why well, I mean I've I've heard it many times and I just uh, I you could just see it that that's just something that's important so I try to get people that are coming on expedition to eat very organic healthy food clean out their system as best they can even if it's only for a week um, yeah let's we do that so but do that to keep yourself healthy don't be toxic don't eat things out of a wrap potato chips and pop come on come on please take care of yourself it's horrible nasty crap.